the frontline workers had limited knowledge on how to respond to this pandemic. I was getting worried because it's very, very important that the frontliners, which most are nurses, we make up 62% of the health workforce. If they get the right information, they should be able to influence their community. I wanted to be a nurse because I was impressed with the uniform. And I had relatives who were nurses. They were part of the community, but they stood out. When you do public health, it takes you to remote areas. In the places that I went to, the only um, way of communing is by foot or horseback. You talk about delivering babies in the plantation. You know, I can almost write a book. Those experiences, they are gold and they are priceless. Certain cases would come to you and you would know nothing of it. But if you read and get the latest information, the latest research, it would reduce the panic attack that you have. When I was director of nursing in Fiji, we saw that the nurses in the remote and uh, maritime stations will not get continuing professional development very easily. I was working in one of the remote stations. And things are according to the bus schedule. As soon as the bus leaves, then you really don't have any patience, so you start to do work on other things. And every time I'd see the nurses go off into another room, and I saw them all gathered around, and then they had the radio telephone on. This was happening every week. We started a radio program called Health On Air. Bulabinaka, everyone. In the studio today, we have uh, Sister Selina Wanga. It was funded by the Australian government. We had developed that uh, program to reach the nurses out there in remote at a particular time, and they can have the knowledge and skill that we want them to have. Sister Selina would be coming with different topics and this was basically to educate the primary healthcare nurses. We learned something new. I learned something new at that time. So I would also join them every week and listen to these sessions. In the context of COVID, the main concern was the fear amongst the nurses. They didn't know how to protect themselves as healthcare workers, given that they're frontliners, and then protect the communities that they serve. Capacity building was one of the greatest needs. We were sitting around the table and the challenge was how do we get to the nurses uh, at this time where there's lockdowns. And that was the light bulb moment when I realized that, you know, yes, we've done something similar to this and we could build on this program. And that's how the whole idea of Healthcare on Air came about. Healthcare on Air Pacific. We were able to develop this program not only in Fiji, but make it a regional project. We came up with 41 topics. We developed scripts in a way that would be engaging. It's something that we give them the generic and uh, they develop it to suit them. Some of them translate it to their own language, like Tonga. Fiji, unfortunately, received the Delta variant in country. We are glad that the Healthcare on Air program had started way before this um, current outbreak that we're having. And one of the tools we are fortunate right now to have is the vaccines. The misinformation was one of the biggest threats to the vaccination program. And to accelerate vaccination, we had to ensure that the nurses were well equipped when they're talking to the communities. And um, so we developed scripts around how to engage with the communities when talking about COVID-19. The nurses, it increased their knowledge and the subjects that they were coming were of interest. It was very short, simple, to the point, and uh, very much what they were lacking. It allowed them to be more confident and to ensure that, you know, uh, they are able to protect themselves and continue the services that they are supposed to provide to the communities. You know, it's not something that is just for this COVID. The world is going virtual now, and so this may be the platform to continuous professional development.